What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to Dark Horse Sports Cards. You have Brody and Silver Sage back with another exciting, fun video for you today. Today, we are going to break down some baseball that we've been opening on the channel. Silver Sage, All Star Alley have been killing it on the baseball side. If you haven't seen the videos, now is the time to go back and watch them because today we're going to show you did we make money or did we light more money on fire? Silver Sage, how are we doing? What's up? All right. So the first, you and I were the original baseball breakers, rippers on this channel. Uh, oh, yeah. We sunk a lot of money. We, that. Yes, that's back in the day. But also first to see <laughs> first to see this product as well. If you remember, we opened this jumbo box, you and I together. And uh, we almost lost the upload and I almost had a heart attack, but we did not lose the upload. <laughs> and let's start there. So this is a hobby jumbo box. Welcome to the financial reviews. We're jumping right in. First, we spent $171 on this jumbo hobby. And let's go through some of the bulk. First, we got $32 in bulk. And how I did the bulk for this one is I put some of the named rookies that we know and love and our top rookies. I put them at a dollar each, and then I just estimated fifteen dollars for the rest of the bulk. So, have we sold any of these cards? We have yet? not sold any of these cards yet. Uh, okay. These. So this is all this is all uh, anticipated eBay. Series. Yeah, and if you look up some of these comps on these, you'll see a range from a dollar to two dollars on these cards. So I feel like it's a little conservative okay. to go to a dollar, but you're not going to be able to buy a card online for much more. Much less than a dollar. No. Um, all right, jumping right into the below average bombs. This is the one to ten dollars. I I wanted to I each each hobby box we open has a little bit different level for the Babs, right? So this is one to ten dollars. The top card here is featured Ellie De La Cruz, ten dollars we sold. This all of this what you see right here is actual sales. So. Oh, these are actual yeah. sales. Heck you can yeah. see one of them, Zach Eloff, base rookie card, sold for 99 cents, unfortunately. Um, Yikes. But these are actual sales, real data, and we were able to collect $42. And this is what baseball does, is it gives you a, a lot of little babs that you can recoup some money on. You know, we opened the Gavin Williams 1989 Chrome Mojo, and you're like, oh, okay, but it's $3. Then this A.J. Smith Shaver, uh, someone in the comments said, hey, that's a good card. And I went and pulled that out and I put it on eBay and made $3.25. So it all adds up. So we got $42 here. So Yeah, baseball seems like if you piecemeal meal it all together, if you really take out all the pieces and you're willing to put the time into selling them on eBay, shipping them all out and stuff, you, you can get a lot closer to what you put into a box than some of these other ones where it's like you either get the card that's worth money or you get – Yes. Nothing. I think our last financial reviews was the downtown chasing, which we experienced exactly what you're talking about. Disaster. <laughs> well, that was also opening yes. older boxes, which is even more like some cards aren't even a $3 card anymore. It's like, no, that person's not even in the league. Good luck trying to sell it. Yep, exactly. All right, this is the We Will Take It. These are all real. Oh, these are cool. These ones. are all real sales. Uh, 10 to 20. Ellie De La Cruz Base, Evan Carter Rookie Mojo. That is amazing right there. And then let's go to that. Let's go to that base though for before we go yeah. any further. The uh, Ellie De La Cruz. What is that base now selling? Yes, for? you're stealing a little bit of my thunder from later. Oh, the, oh sorry, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. Apologies, apologies, apologies. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the concept that we'll get to and what you're alluding to is if you are going to sell, sell your cards, I think everybody knows this, but it's super important. It's worth repeating. If you're going to sell your cards, you need to sell them immediately while everybody is Google searching sell and fast. everybody is eBaying and everybody's looking right around the time of product release because people will go to the store, buy their pack, not – this is how I envision it in my head – not get the card that they want and then go on eBay and just buy the card. So uh, if Could you be. don't sell, if you're planning to sell the cards, you need to list them right away because uh, the $15 Ellie, we, we've already seen comps and now at two to three to $4. So, 
I think the other thing is supply and demand as oh. well. You have some people that, you know, they, they are flippers of wanting to send raw cards in to be the first PSA 10. So you have them that they're willing to spend $15 right away because they can flip it because they know the first PSA 10, it's the same yep. thing. That's going to sell for more. So also, I think maybe there is this little uh, this idea too. Maybe when it first comes out, it's very similar to how I buy product or used to buy product. We're a little bit better now of where I would walk into the store and I would see like 15 mega boxes of Prism basketball. And I'm like, I got to buy all of them because I don't know if they're ever going to come back out. So you have this idea and it's probably the same thing of like, you don't really know how much of this product is printed. Yes. Um, one one product stage that we did cash in on well are these rookies and stars longevity boxes. Those dropped online, sold out super fast, and have never been sold again. It was one drop and that was it. And we were lucky enough to have, I still have like six or so of those to open, but maybe that's the same kind of idea. It's like you don't know how much of this stuff is printed. And then a month from now, when you start seeing a thousand LA Day Cruise bases yeah. for sale on eBay, it's tough for each one of those to go for 15 bucks. Yes, exactly everything you're saying. And one thing I wanted to point out here, it's not shown, but we have two relic cards here. But if you look up Stanton material, we had a bat for him too. We got three relic cards and no autographs in this box to remind you. And those are all like actually game use. Yes. Game use memorabilia. Which is nice. So, uh, okay, moving on. Oh, we got no auto in this box. We just got all. Remember, of... this was the I one where we didn't get the auto. That. This is why I wanted to break this one down too. So, here we go. We got eighty nine dollars. So this adds up quick. And remember, we only spent a hundred eighty dollars, wow. and we got eighty nine bucks of real sales coming back right here. Basically half of it right yep. there. And now we have the big one. Ooh. Number 10 of 199 sold for $33. And I just wanted to apologize. I should have timed the auction for it to finish <laughs> right as he hit his grand slam in his three home run <laughs> game. But uh, yeah, we have gotten pretty lucky with some of these auctions. Remember some of those guys in the playoffs, they were popping off right when right when we had the auction. Oh, Purdy was going nuts. <laughs> yes. Jordan Love. So, yeah, we were getting a lot of the big name guys. We sold right these all we before the about. season started, just in case they came out with a slow start. But uh, Harper uh, is on fire right now. So, And we, mi we missed out on our auto in this box. It was guaranteed. So we wrote a letter to Tops. We filled out the forms. Oh, and we yes. got this shipped to us. We haven't uh, listed this on eBay, but uh, we will soon. And That's a cool-looking card, yeah, though. Yeah, it's – I like it with the stars. It's a kind of a unique autograph. And uh, I looked it up, and comps is about $15 on it. He's now on the Giants, so he's not in the Marlins uniform. But it, or at least it doesn't say Giants down below and the Marlins uniform. That's my biggest pet peeve of basketball cards. But uh, I wanted your thoughts on this. Well, I was going to say I wanted your thoughts on it because I read some of the comments because we posted the YouTube short of you opening yes. this. So if you haven't watched that, go check yeah. it out. And I was, it was interesting to see a lot of the comments were negative in the fact of negative towards tops right. and the fact of, oh, wow, look at this, look at this, you know, look at this it, it, autograph you gave them, right? You went to the back and just try to find a random sticker and threw it on a card and just threw it to us to tell us to stop complaining. Yeah. And it's one of it's one of those things of where, you know, I used to work at Subway and if someone ordered a sandwich and they came back and they're like, "Hey, this isn't the correct sandwich. You gave me the wrong sandwich." The least minimum thing you can do is give them the correct sandwich. <laughs> yes. Make them the correct sandwich. But normally you want to go a little above and beyond because giving them the correct sandwich they're walking away with nothing, but they wasted their time, right? They, they've wasted their time. They have to come back, wait for another sandwich they made. So you kind of want, for that mistake, you kind of want to go a little above and beyond. And uh, I think that's what people were saying. They don't think this was an above and beyond autograph. Yeah, card. so two things, two things. 
One is people could be lying, so they might not want to go above and beyond for liars, and they might have okay. these crappy autos li lying around, and if somebody takes the time to lie, they still get a crappy auto. We did have video evidence. Yes, we were not in that camp. But here's the thought that I – that this is what wronged me, and uh, if you're watching this right now, you're going to get a little spoiler, is I saw an email come across tops – Shipping and it said right there, Solaire autograph. So unfortunately, I knew. Oh, you knew. I it. accidentally. I oh. I wouldn't have checked the email. I love to like whenever the grades are online. I never look at anything uh, for PSA grading. Uh, so I kind of I knew I did know it was Solaire, but I wasn't sure if it was numbered or not numbered. So and it was a cool design. I didn't look it up, so I was surprised. But I I was not surprised to see uh, Solaire pop was. up. But here's here's what uh, what I have a problem with is that it wasn't it felt not random right so give me have make some packs randomize a bunch of bad autos in there oh. I don't care maybe they're all bad autos right but give a pack so somebody can open it and get their bad auto you and feel it like feels this was more picked out and given it to feels you. more random oh. that's what I think they should do so that's my suggestion to tops. I like that idea yeah. too. I do. We all like opening yes. packs. I mean, to be fair, you got to open a box, so it was like that. But I see what you're saying of where someone someone picked this card out and, and typed said, it in and the then shipped it to me, to right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just make some random stuff. And uh, even if you don't even add any good Ellie De La Cruz autos in there, just we would never know, right? Okay. So here's the end of the box. And what we do here is we're just trying to, you know, be transparent on what we spent, what we got back, and just trying to do a breakdown. We do this if it's good or bad on a lot of our bigger products. So if you're new here, thanks for mm -hmm. sticking with us. But we spent 171 out the door, got 32 back in bulk, 42 back in Babs, 89 back, and we will take it, 33 Harper. Got a missing auto back as well. Mm -hmm. I was impressed with how fast they turned it back for 200. It was a fast two hundred and eleven dollars back of a forty dollar profit, and this is where I was going to talk about. You have to sell early or you have to hold. I think these exact just being upfront with everybody here. If we open this exact box and got these exact cards, I think we're maybe getting half sixty percent of our money back instead of a forty percent profit. And you might say. Well, you didn't sell all those cards. Yeah, you're right. We didn't sell some of the lower ones, but we sold all, we sold and already collected the cash, the real sales. You can go find the comps on our eBay store of the other ones. So we have this locked in for the most part. We'll get that to it. Yeah, it's interesting too because there is there is an aspect too of like holding, like you said, holding some of those cards because you know five years from now maybe some of those cards are worth a lot more than what we ended up selling yeah. them. So it's all it's all. It's all gamble at the end of the day and it's all, you know, do you want to get money back right away so you can invest it in more product or do you like having that card? Do you want to hold on yeah. to it for a little bit, then try to sell it? Well, I will say the, the thing that is probably the best about baseball is, and we've seen this from some of the other boxes you guys have opened, is the return seems so much better than football, so much better than basketball, where – yeah, the YouTube views are, are slightly down compared to the other, but they make up for it with the actual cards. It's such a weird thing where like the – it seems like the card market is so much higher right now in baseball, but the video market, outside of a few you know YouTube creators that make baseball content, from what I've seen from the majority of the people that make baseball content and football content and basketball content, is the baseball content's always the lowest. Yeah, lots to unpack there, but I think you're dead on. I think if I were to summarize it, I would say the fifth, the sixth best quarterback doesn't do very well, whereas like the fifth, sixth best rookie is still like sought after. There's more it's more yes. of a mutual fund approach to baseball than like buying the penny stocks in NFL, right? Football, it's like you gotta be the best that you're working. Yes. <laughs> So, okay, so moving on, we then also opened a hobby breakdown. 
hobby breakdown, a hobby box, and this is the breakdown. Oh, I was gonna say hobby breakdown. I haven't heard no, that one before. No, this is a this is the breakdown. <laughs> I need I need to open up some uh, prism. Hobby We're breakdown. in the breakdown, and this is a hobby box. And there's one autograph in this one. And let's get through this quickly. Twelve dollars and fifty cents a bulk. This was only a hundred dollar box, ninety seven ninety. We're exact here. That's We're exact crazy. here on Dark Horse Sports Cards. We sold some Babs for twenty six fifty four. We got the patch up there. We didn't get an auto in this box. And some of the bases were still selling pretty high here for some of these cards. And we got a foil base rookie of Andy Rodriguez. And uh, there's just a lot. You end these these openings with a, ton, a stack of rookies. So that stack of rookies, I just said, you know what? That's $7.50. So able to make about $38 back here on this one. And this box was saved by a big card right here. Out of 50, the Mother's Day pink. Wow. Michael Harris, not even a rookie card. That's a that's such a it sick card. Sold for fifty six dollars, and I did not realize when I opened this. I would have been way more excited if I realized it. But uh, <laughs> we opened this and we said, "Oh yeah, that's pink. That's numbered out of fifty. That seems good." But I think like out of ba basketball or football, out of fifty, it's really good. But in baseball, because the print run is so large and they make so many cards, out of fifty, what I learned after that is actually just really, really impressive. And it's very hard to get. And I've watched a lot of this product open and I've opened a lot more and I've never even sniffed another one out of 50. So very rare. And I was just wondering, like, I don't know. What do you think? Wouldn't that be kind of fun to put together a set of the whole set of a certain parallel number, like collect all the pink sets. Maybe somebody's out there is doing that. That's gonna be so hard. Yeah, to do. but so that's my question for the comments. Have you guys ever collected any sets? For the question for the viewers, I think you would have to do it with like a really low number, and it would be so expensive. You'd have to do it with like out of ten or out of yeah. Five. But you could do it anything. You could it do it be... out of two thousand two uh, two thousand twenty four. It would be simpler. How? No, 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 no. no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Two thousand cards. Let's, let's reset here. We're not we're not communicating appropriately. I'm talking a binder of all pink of every card in this set. So you only get one copy. Oh, I thought you were saying you want every all 50 <laughs> no, no, of Michael no, no, Harris's no, 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 pink. No, no, no. I was going to say that's going <laughs> to be impossible. <laughs> oh, you just want one of each card. Being, yeah, okay. so there's 300 yeah. cards. You have to get the full set. So my question to the viewers is, gotcha. are there any sets that you've gone after or collected like that? And tell us about them in the comments. Mm. But yeah, maybe... It's going to be so... Yeah. Maybe oh, somebody's ahead. like, hey, I want to get the whole top set in pink. And they're just searching the auctions out of 50. Gotcha. It would take years to complete because, you know, the random ones would not come up very much. No, it'd be really, really tough. You would have to open a lot of product, too, to probably get yeah. some. But I would, I'll say this, too. I think it's going to be really interesting to, to kind of see the growth and change that we've had. Because me and Kelsey are learning every single time we open video, uh, open new product and stuff. We're learning yeah. stuff, uh, you know, whether it's players or whether it's like uh, how rare certain Inserts, cards are. parallels, numbers. There's some case so hits. <laughs> it's it's going to be awesome. Like, you know, a year from now, two years from now, where we're still doing this and we're opening. Because you've, you've said on the channel before, you've collected cards for a really long time, but you just haven't really opened an insane amount of product like we are going to be doing over the next year or two and so we're all learning and stuff right yeah. now and uh yeah i mean it's even funny going back and watching some of our first videos on here we're freaking <laughs> out over certain cards that we probably have like 15 of now yeah. but at the time we just had no idea so this is this is the other side of where you got a really rare card and you had no idea you I got like that's cool. It's not a rookie. It's out of 50. No problem. <laughs> but it made the whole box. As you can see right here, you got $56 back. We made $95 back. We've sold the majority wow. of this 3% loss and Harris made the whole box. So, uh, you guys are killing we, it. We got to have some fun opening and we made a lot of money back. So, and then here's some quick data hangers versus blasters. We had another, sorry, it's a little cut off there. We had a two hangers and two blasters. So just to give you a little perspective, mm -hmm. I put all the cards into Excel spreadsheets, you guys, uh, and I just snipped exactly from my Excel spreadsheet. You see, for the two hangers, we spent $30, and we made $21 back. 
for the blasters. We spent fifty dollars. We made fifty eight dollars back. So really good blasters. Wow. That's because in those blasters we got an Ellie De La Cruz base, which we sold for ten, and then an Andrew Two Hands Abbott Red Two Hand Abbott uh, for twenty dollars and fifty cents, and then Sedani Rafella for eleven dollars. Those number of cards. Do you think this story helped? <laughs> did he sell over comps? Do you think um, the story? He doesn't helped? really. It's it was so brand new. I didn't look at comps, but uh, I think it was. Yeah, I don't even know. I gotta check. We'll see. Okay, we'll see. I have to think the story at least <laughs> gave it an extra fifty cents. So, and I only added a couple of base, a couple of dollars for bulk there because the random rookies. So the blasters, our luck, we made some money on the blasters, which is nice. Then I opened. We opened this weird. 20 pack retail box. We actually did okay because we we pulled a nice Mookie Betts, and then I'm out on retail boxes, yeah. Sage. I think I think they're the worst product. Uh, turn, yeah, it was a mistake, but it could have been a lot worse. We got fifty seven dollars back, but most most of that is in the bulk, and that's hard to move. You want to see in my spreadsheet? You want to see more in the top half of this because those are individual larger cards. So easier to yep, sell. And I'll get to that one final thought on that in the next slide. But back to three. We these were the special fanatics blasters. And the cheapest you can get them right now is forty dollars still. So I think I got a good purchase there. And That's we nice. hit that Jordan Alvarez uh home field advantage. It's it's like a downtown, the baseball version of the downtown. You got the the rocket ship in the background. I cannot believe how low this card sold for. I thought it would go for thirty bucks minimum. So that was disappointing. Yeah, we pulled we pulled in a I don't even remember what video or what, what it was. It was some draft picks college basketball. I don't know. But it's called on campus. Yeah. And so I think it's it's the college version of a downtown. Yeah. And we pulled one of those and it was sick. And I think we just sold that one for like buy it now for forty bucks or nice. something. So that one sold pretty good, but yeah, I thought that card when you pulled it, I thought that was like a mother I did card. too. It looks so I think sick. it sold under comps too, but you know, when somebody buys it, they sometimes take a while till they pay for that one. I was like, oh, if this guy doesn't pay, I'm going to be so happy because I will, I don't necessarily <laughs> want to sell for $14.50. And then, of course, payment immediately. Instant. <laughs> <laughs> the ones you want them not to pay on, the guy pays immediately. Uh, yeah. we got a really <laughs> sick Evan Carter base aqua too. So these were really fun yeah, videos. Aqua, I, I love the aqua pair. Um, Brody and I did the first one, but my wife, Allie and I, all star Allie did the, the last five and go back and watch some of those and leave some comments and tell us you went back and watched them, uh, from this. If you go back and watch and we'll reply to your comments. Anyways, here's the final summary. For all these six videos we did, we spent $519 wow. and we got $506 back, 97% recouped. Now, for the haters, I'll beat you to it, right? Well, how much cast did, did you actually get back in and how much like of that is sitting in bulk that you can't sell? Well, we got mm. 382 cash back already and the rest is in inventory. And what do we do with the rest to be determined? I have some ideas though. I have some ideas, but... It stems around player lots and uh, team lots. I think that you, we would actually have a better chance of just buying one hobby box worth $500 than doing what you did. What do you mean? Like, I think, I think you have a better percentage of buying one box for $500 and trying to get $500 worth of cards than you do what you did. Like what you did was very impressive. Buying like seven or eight different kinds of right. boxes and getting close to all, you know, your money back. I think that is less yes. likely. I think I got- Because you're more likely to have a, a bunch of ducks. I think we got in general, I think we got extremely lucky to get here. One, just lucky boxes as it is. Two, we sold a lot of cards fast. So that combination mm -hmm. means you can like barely break even. If Tops would have sent us a better, <laughs> better autograph, we would have, we would have made money on it. I know, this. I know, I know. So, oh, but yeah, if man. you if you if if you open one hobby box like you're saying 500 and hit one good, like we did this in football with the Stroud, you hit one good card, yep. the whole box could be out. But yeah, I think some of our financial reviews we've shown if you do hobby boxes 
you get more money back and more of a return and like some of the retail is more boom or bust but you know it's cheaper so it's all what you want to do it's cheaper it's, more it's all what you want to do all right financial breakdowns as always silver sage killing it thank you guys so much for watching if you're still watching this let us know in the comments by already putting hashtag tadpole gang you already know we really appreciate you guys supporting the channel we are on our way to 10,000 subscribers absolutely insane we also do have a silver sage giveaway going on right now so if you're interested in that make sure to go back and watch some of the baseball videos uh, some of the most recent baseball videos he'll explain how to win that we have more giveaways coming on our end as well and until next time keep ripping them packs